Good morning all. Hillgrove, one of the few companies working in the um, uh, Cambria Hill Division of the Delamere and of South East South Australia and uh, very pleased with the uh, work that the Geol Survey are now undertaking in that area and if you weren't at the Discovery Day yesterday then you missed some great presentations. The opening slide here shows uh, one of the freight trains uh, running between Melbourne and Adelaide um, with the, uh, uh, I guess, the caricature of it running with a whole bunch of uh, copper concentrate uh, containers on the back of it as we endeavour to fill those uh, with our future projects from uh, the southeast. Uh, Hillgrove has been working in this area for about three years now, but working at Cayman 2, uh, the uh, operating copper gold mine uh, in the uh, Delamarin and the only, in fact, uh, base metals mine or uh, metals mine in the agricultural district of South Australia uh, for these last few years, and, and very successfully so. So our main focus is to continue in this copper gold uh, projects that we have, to continue to build our uh, resource base and our projects around the Canman 2 uh, system that we have there in the infrastructure. And Lock and Wallace later on today will be speaking to the activities that we're doing at Canman 2 itself. Our second objective is to then apply the knowledge that we're learning from those mineral systems at Canman 2 into the broader uh, South East South Australia district, uh, seeing as how it's part of the same geological province. We have over 6,000 square k's working in there and therefore a significant land holding within which to uh, uh, make a discovery of large tier one type deposits. Uh, we have a large a commitment to engaging with our local landholders. Uh, you may or may not be aware of recent land access inquiries around um, uh, South Australia uh, promulgated by our current parliament. And, and one of the things that uh, we take delight in is that uh, over the last year as that inquiry has been unfolding, uh, we are the, the, uh, you know, the operating metals mine over that period of time, uh, large exploration commitment. In fact, there were no commentaries by any of the um, uh, pr um, uh, submissions to that land inquiry against any of Hillgrove's activities. So we take that as a great credit to us uh, that uh, we're able to work with the communities and, and continue to engage. Our underground project that's about to proceed, as you'll hear from Lachlan later on, uh, was approved by a local community within a matter of months uh, after having uh, an open pit uh, effectively on their back door. We continue to, um, in the southeast, then apply these uh, geological characteristics that we're learning from Canman 2 uh, in a fundamental way to our work in the southeast. Uh, we put a lot of time, as I said, into the community uh, activities and, um, and responding to um, uh, the, con the local concerns as well as the broader concerns. And the way that we like to put ourselves is that, in fact, we are a concentrated industrial estate. And the way to kind of overcome the depopulation of the, the rural districts is to recognise that a concentrated industrial estate creates a lot of local employment opportunities. Hillgrove in its time in Canman 2 over the last uh, seven years has put uh, 200 million bucks. That's not in royalties, that's not in, uh, in taxes, that's in people's pockets uh, within an hour of the Canman 2 mine. There are a few other industries that are able to provide that sort of benefit. And I think it's a story that should be uh, told more regularly into the agricultural districts about the way that they can turn around the level of services and, and community um, activities that can take place when you have such a concentrated uh, community support. We um, embarked, as I said, really in the southeast, which I'll be concentrating my talk on now, in data collection activities from the grassroots. So instead of going back to you know, what's perhaps been drilled before and, and sort of focusing around that, we've kind of gone, OK, look, there's really not been a lot of work done here for 20, 30 years. Let's, let's now apply some uh, changes in uh, exploration activities, uh, exploration knowledge, exploration techniques, and, and, and have a look at this endowed province uh, from grassroots up. So we've gone back to infilling the gravity. Uh, we've gone back to doing a new technique, passive seismic, uh, and uh, to look at this depth of cover with a better uh, a technique than just um, uh, a, perhaps a gravity inversion has been done in the past. We've, we've gone back to a lot of the uh, uh, the drill holes that have been done by uh, government or exploration activity uh, companies in the, in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, and we've undertaken now whole rock and multi-element geochemistry, not systematically applied 
in, uh, in, in the era of 20, 30 years ago. They were expensive techniques and, and not um, undertaken. We've gone back to those drill holes and selectively done that. Uh, new techniques like copper isotope uh, work done with University of Adelaide. Uh, we've done a lot of petrology work through uh, the one guy, Roger Taylor in Tassie, um, a few more grey hairs than I have, therefore a great wisdom being applied to uh, building up a knowledge, a wisdom about how these systems uh, look like across the belt. Uh, pyrite SEM through codes, uh, low level soils and we're still working on how the soil geochemistry works in this area of exotic cover. Age dating, age dating, the challenge, of the, 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 the title of my talk is The Challenge, The Challenge of Dating Stuff. Um, the technology, look sure it's getting better, but you know when you're working in Mafix and uh, mm, these darker looking rocks, the zircons don't grow very big. And so we've had a lot of difficulty trying to, to really put together the sequences. And you heard some of that at Discovery Day yesterday uh, as um, uh, slowly uh, they're working through dating a series, mostly of the felsic intrusives because the, the material gets a bit bigger there, uh, to be able to date. But what we have worked with here is the University of Adelaide uh, with a GL survey here, uh, some work um, historically trying to create, well, where are these mineralising events occurring what, what, uh, and uh, how are they reflected? And so you can see here a range of dates around our Canman 2 mine, sitting around 500 to 490 are the dates that are coming out of uh, some zircons and some monazites and, and titanites. Uh, when we then look at some of these cross-cutting felsic dikes that we see cross-cutting the mineralisation, totally undeformed by the Delamere origin itself, uh, but still um, mineralised, chocopyrite, pyrite, pyrotite, mineralised, um, we see that in fact they are clearly also dating post uh, Delamere and Origin around that 483 mark. We have, uh, we'll talk a little bit later about this elbite carbonate, uh, uh, copper gold uh, veins, uh, uh, dikes that we're also coming across and where do they fit in. Uh, we, uh, uh, up further north of us, about 50k away, another series of dikes. These ones are actually mineralised, uh, cross-cut by um, these uh, montanites and diorites, cross-cut by uh, copper uh, chalco mineralisation. Uh, it's a place called Kanapa. Um, down in the south, uh, A-type gr uh, granites, uh, post-dating the Delamere Origin, cross-cut by copper moly vein sets, uh, just recently dated by the GEOL survey and reported yesterday by Way. Very thank you, thank thankful. Uh, and some early work looking at trying to date the, the, the gold um, vein sets through the Adelaide Hills. So what we find is, in fact, there, is a mo there are multiple mineralising events, multiple deformation events or multiple structural events occurring over a period here of around 30 million years, uh, reflecting in, in different mineral chemistry as well. So it's a really active uh, uh, belt uh, from a, both a tectonic and from a mineralising fluid uh, viewpoint. The laser ablation stuff what really confirms a lot of what we're seeing in the petrology. That, that a lot of our fluid systems here are, are, are retrograde thermal events, starting off with high temperature events, uh, uh, followed up with uh, lower temperature and fluid changes uh, to, to low temperature acidic fluids. And, and so we see some of that occurring here. The copper isotope stuff, the same, uh, very, uh, showing up very different populations of the chocopyrite uh, occurring uh, with the different ages. Uh, the one on the left there is within our Sin Delamerian material, the chocopyrite there. The one on the right is from these very late, or uh, much younger, um, uh, felsic vein sets. Uh, again, strongly mineralised, very different copper uh, s signature. Having collected a whole bunch of data, mm, you need to process it. So uh, again, processing algorithms have got smarter over the last few years that we've been dealing with. And so we've been uh, re-imaging some of the mags, which is the public domain material. Uh, but in particular, the gravity, as I said before, collected more, uh, been re-imaging that, in particular with the passive seismic. So now we're able to uh, uh, model a much better depth of bedrock, apply that then to the gravity data and get a better map of residual gravity. Uh, running some inversions of that uh, uh, data sets and having a look at both uh, the imaging and the inversion models to start looking at uh, a decent gravity base map. Uh, looking at the geochemistry, as I said before, the whole rock multi-element geochemistry and applying various uh, 
whatever you want to call them, fertility indexes uh, for these magmatic systems. And, and really we've run you know, through a whole bunch of those. Uh, Luke's uh, is the kind of one often used. Uh, Wells uh, did some work on the Macquarie Arc. Uh, John Foden has published a couple looking at uh, in the southeast. Uh, there are various indexes for adequites uh, and so on. We've indexed all of those and then I guess created a, a classification schema of where all of them apply and where you know, 50% of them apply and where, where maybe only 20% or so of those indexes apply for particular uh, units to kind of uh, uh, categorise them. Using the mags, the gravity, the petrology, uh, the relogging of a whole bunch of drill core out of the Tonsa Core Library, we've we built our own base map as a result of that. Slightly different to the geol survey, but because we're dealing at a different scale. And, and, and part of the difference is is how we view the timing of some of these things. You know, there are assumptions made about those sediments and the, and the mafix that occurred down the south, but very poor control on the timing and the ages of those. So, you know, some of the differences between the geo survey map that's been, uh, that was published uh, mid last year and, and, the, and the map that we're working with now is uh, because of a view of the timing. Uh, we've also undertaken a whole bunch of heritage surveys through the area uh, environmental surveys, a lot of community consultation and local business consultation, so important to the rural areas to, to gain their support uh, for answering the question, what's in it for them? In uh, yesterday's Discovery Day presentations, uh, there was a, a theme, particularly by Wei Hong, of the, um, the porphyry possibility within uh, South Australia. And it's something that's been spoken of uh, for several years, you know, dating back uh, probably for 10 or 20 years. John Foden uh, has published about the, uh, the presence of a Bononites down in the southeast near Keith, reflecting on the possibility of therefore subduction system being a little bit uh, further to the west than the Staveley system. Uh, you look at the porphyry fractionation indexes, again, Way's work and, and our work in the south. Uh, various porphyry uh, copper moly occurrences through South Australia, the work by, again, the Geol Survey, the Loch Lily Cars Belt and the Mount Wright Volcanics, all kind of demonstrating that, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done, a lot of knowledge to be gained and to continue to delve into how this whole belt is working in South Australia. And, and um, uh, what it's creating, therefore, is a lot of opportunity because it's not well tied down at this point in time. Um, so we're, we're part of that exploration opportunity. The other exploration opportunity that we think is, 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 is present there, and I've, look, I've used the name the Patterson Province style. It's, it's uh, uh, really capturing a name for this um, uh, thermal gradient, this retrograde thermal gradient that we see uh, through consistency through a lot of the petrology and at Canman to itself. From an early onset of high temperature fluids to later Totally different, different age, but cooling fluid systems as the tectonics continue to accordion style uh, these pre existing structures. And so we see um, these early iron sulfides, the pyrotites, overprinted by Chalco, uh, overprinted by bismuthonites, overprinted by arsenic tungsten uh, type uh, fluid systems, strong vein breccia scarn textures, and veins often dominantly in the actual plane uh, of that tectonic system. So every time this, these pre-existing structures take a, an extensional system and open up, these fluids take the opportunity to pump in and fill them with these sulphide systems. And uh, uh, we think therefore that there is great opportunity for these high grade uh, iron sulphide copper gold systems to occur throughout the southeast. As a result of um, these kind of uh, targeting and the data sets that we've looked at, uh, we have developed a whole bunch of targets um, uh, throughout our 6,000 square k's. And I've said, well, we've got a problem with the Anthropocene. So it's really how many uh, hours in a day can you work over the next couple of years to kind of uh, resolve these. And so if we go through a whole range of images here looking at uh, both geochemical and geophysical targets for whether we're looking at porphyry copper systems or whether we're looking at these Patterson Province type uh, magmatic systems, then, then we can develop a whole range of specific targets, some of which overlap and therefore uh, higher priority for us to go and investigate. 
Let's have a look at some of these. Stella is one that we drilled and we're thankful for the ADI grant of the Department of Energy and Mines to assist us with this. And we dissected two distinctly different systems in the, in the one hole. So one is the Kanman 2 system, this copper vein breccia style uh, over printed with bismuthonite. And so we get this uh, you know, half ounce gold, 10% copper uh, type uh, system. But later on down the hole, which is very similar to Kanman 2, later on down the hole, we get this, this much later, totally undeformed, low temperature, albite carbonate uh, vein system with a strong chunk of pyrite gold uh, sitting within it as a vein system. Uh, not properly drilled because the, the orientation of it's uh, similar to the, um, the drilling orientation we had and we need to come back and investigate this. Uh, what it means, you know, we just need to get, keep plugging away. But what, it, but what it is, is a totally new uh, copper gold system, unrecognised previously, that offers us great uh, opportunity to explore and to develop the copper endowment of the area. And this, this kind of theme just continues on. Kanapa to the north, you know, um, two ounce gold, 13% copper in rock chips and, and uh, some drill intersections in, again, uh, these monsonite dikes that are post Delamerin, uh, low temperature or lower temperature uh, infill uh, vein textures. Uh, Sherlock, Sherlock's put out there as a um, sediment hosted semi-massive sulphide or uh, a syngenetic or diagenetic type system. We would maintain that in fact it's syn or post-metamorphic uh, uh, system. In all the petrology work that we've done there, consistent that we see again the sulphides infilling pre-existing um, uh, um, uh, structures and uh, uh, cleavage zones uh, over, uh, and post-metamorphic in uh, time. So we, again, we think that it's a late stage magmatic hydrothermal system. Uh, I'm getting the ding. So we, we, we can just keep going. We could go for as long as we wanted in this kind of theme throughout that southeast of these mineral systems operating. Uh, this is one that's down in the south. It's a whole new gold occurrence. It didn't come up in the original assays when the, when the drilling was being done. But when we looked at it under petrology, here was gold showing up um, in, under the petrologist went then through QEMSCAN uh, and uh, SEM and confirmed, and multiple grains of gold occurring uh, through this very gossiness, uh, late altered uh, basaltic sequence. So in conclusion, we, we are uh, very cognizant that the Macquarie Arc, in fact, started back here in South Australia, Western Vic, Western New South, and then migrated over to um, international borders. And, um, uh, and so we're, in conjunction with the GEOL survey, South Australia now working on putting it back where it belongs, back here and generating some great targets out of that. But in addition, we believe that there's this very strong magmatic hydrothermal system operating that's in a thermal gradient from uh, this active granite and tectonic uh, process that's occurring, and the whole belt is underexplored. Let's not be frightened by some of the cover. There are great techniques and new technologies available now for us to go and target these systems. Um, so the lack of work by explorers, researchers has, 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 has therefore created great opportunity. Uh, we're very thankful for the work that the, the Joel survey is undertaking and, and hopefully they maintain the rage and uh, keep driving to uh, help us understand the opportunities, the mineral systems that are occurring there because there's multiple sets of them. Uh, and we're a first mover into this space. I'd just like to acknowledge all the people that we uh, are the beneficiaries of and be able to talk here today as part of our teams. I've put up on the top of the list there the Tonsley Core Library. It, I don't know how many of you actually get down there and work there, but they're a great group of people and only too helpful to help you out. And uh, I really think that it's, a, it's an understated, magnificent resource. Uh, GL survey and uh, most of those people are here today, past and present, uh, the petrology work and just getting those fundamental building blocks being put together to look for the patterns and how these things, mineral systems are operating. Uh, uh, the resource potentials guys helped us put together the base maps. Uh, I've named there the team of uh, the geos, our field assistants, our, dare I say, accountants, um, our payroll clerks. Uh, but it's a team, isn't it, that all these back people that never get to stand in the front, but we need to acknowledge that we can't do the work without them. And the Board of Hillgrove, of course, uh, providing us support for really a regional grassroots exploration exercise and maintaining the funding that's required to uh, come up with the great discoveries. So thank you all. Thanks for listening and hope you get on board with Hillgrove. <laughs>